Dave here, how are you? Today I'm down at the Canberra Timber and Working Group Wood Show and I have held off a little bit for the start of the show because of Marie's Day. Now in Australia at 11 o'clock, we stop for a minute and just letting everyone's clocks around the world if they're out a minute or two, you know, terrific. Now first of all, and again, Remembrance Day is for a reason. It made me stop and think about one of my uncles that had died on a, um, on a death march. Uh, also, one of my daughters was in the armed services, so, you know, it's, it's something that I think we should all give it a bit of respect to. So we're going to jump over here and we're going to have a look at the mills to start with. So I'm going to switch the screens and hopefully that's going to do it. We've got 18 people watching. Come on, switch. There we go. All right, so I'm going to take us over here. I'm hoping the sound is coming through okay. And we're going to have a look at one of these sawmills, or a couple of mills. These are by Logisol, and this particular mill is a chainsaw mill. Now, I've been doing some milling of some bloodwood at my place, so you may be interested to watch this. I have prepped the guys to be able to show us how it's all going to work. And there we go. We got away from one of the boys, and this is Logisol made in Sweden. I don't do a Swedish accent, <laughs> so we'll wait for him to start her up. There we go. There's one slabbed board straight away. And I'll ask him what type, what type of timber was that? Give me a second, he might be dropping it. There we go. Wow, he's going to do the height adjust and everything. happening I don't know if you can hear me all right over the chainsaw but he's got a sharpener as well that's running Now he's done that, so what we've got over here is also a chainsaw sharpener that's automatic. See this thing right in the center here? I'm gonna come over because I can, because I've got the, got the remote happening. It's pushing it along, indexing. The diamond tip wheel is coming down and uh, sharpening it. Pushes it along to the next one. The only downside, of course, it doesn't know when it's finished. <laughs> but then you switch it over, go the other direction. Now, the boys were telling me yesterday that they set this up for 10 degrees for ripping. So there's different angles for different things that they're doing. Ah, it's back to the beginning. So now we're going to go over to the other side here. And we've got another mill, which is a conventional bandsaw. Let me see if I can just line the camera up. And who we got running this one? Dominic. Dominic. There you go. He's going to give everyone a wave. Give everyone a wave, Dominic. Dominic. Beautiful. Here we go. This is the chainsaw. Not chainsaw, it's a bandsaw. That's quite a slab. A 
little bit quieter than the chainsaw. It looks a little bit similar to what Matt Cremona does. I'm going to go around to the front. I'm going to try and keep on the saw. There we go. Dominic might load her up again and go again. No, that's it. Okay. That's wonderful. Yeah, we'll do another one so we can see from this end as it's coming through. I'm sure everyone would like to have a watch. What type of timber is that? Just pine? Radiata. Radiata. What was the other one that we did the chainsaw with? Uh, that was the same. Same, a bit of radiata. Yes, Gary, we did a millant. Well, we, we didn't put the show on until after about three or four minutes past 11. So we were all observing a minute silence then. Here he comes. Beautiful. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Hey guys, can I ask why you wet it down before you ran it through? Can I ask why you wet it down before you ran it through and after? The camera. The camera? <laughs> All right, Dominic, tell me why you ran it through, put some water over it. Just to see what the grain looks like. Okay, so it's nothing to try and... No, no, just to show people what it looks like after you've cut it. Beautiful. It's That's like it open up a, a drew box to see what's it's in It's really there. clean, isn't it? Yeah. It, very, very clean. All right, guys, thank you very much. No Going right. to head inside. Have a good day. Thank you. Okay, now we're going to go in here and I'm going to have a chat to um, Cole Hosey. The guys are quite excited about being on the show. So walking in the door, again a heap of timber, purple heart, and uh, all these pieces up against the wall, camphor, a uh, heap of uh, tools just absolutely everywhere, all over the all over the tables. Then we got Jim Davy over here, and uh, good morning, is Jim here? He's he's we've gone past eleven o'clock, Jim. Give me a second, Jim. I'll put the camera here and then I'll come over and I'll have a chat to you. All right. Take this off. Tell me all about this, this one, Jim. This is one of my shooting boards for doing long and end grain. Yes. And it's, uh, it's got an adjustable fence on it so you can set it to the width of the board for doing box sides, draw sides. So they all come out exactly the same width. And this particular one, special order, being left handed. Left handed, wow. And the board is ramped up. So as you're pushing towards the end, it's actually acting, making the plane a skew plane? No. No? No. What's it doing? Right. So you can use more of the width of the blade. More of the width of the plane? Yeah. It, the skew part doesn't come into it, it's only approaching a little, uh, a little bit no, of the end because, grain as it's a touch? Because the blade is still um, at the same angle. Okay. All right. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna th have a think about that one later on, yeah. Jim. But uh, I'm, I'm sure we'll have a beer and uh, discuss go, that a bit go, more. Go down to the lab and yep. get the geometry tools out and work it out. All right. Okay. Well, thanks for that advice, Jim. Right. Okay. I'll leave you with it. Okay, Thank you. Okay, Jim, not a person to argue with. <laughs> and Susie, his good-looking wife. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Okay, we're going to come around to Cole now. Where's he gone? Okay, so let's see if he's anywhere around. Okay, so has anyone heard of the Gifkins jig? 
I'm sure you have. Okay. Uh, Cole should be here somewhere, but I've lost him. How's the time going? Give me a second. All right, well, while we're waiting, let's have a swing round to this side. And you can see down here all the inlays, which will look really, really nice. And again, my favorite paper is the color-coded sandpapers. And what else are we looking for? Oh, guy over here doing didgeridoos. Let's have a look at those. So there's some just raw timber there that they turn into these here. And we're live, guys. Are you able to tell me something about the product here? Um, yes, they're, they're uh, eucalypt trees that have been naturally uh, hollowed out by termites. Right. Um, there's a couple of different species. There's mallee. Yes. And there's box tree, which is actually grey box. Yes. Um, go out into the bush and collect the trees that are naturally termite hollowed and we season them and then we make the instrument. And what I'm sort of promoting here today is a workshop where if people want to come in, they can actually make the didgeridoo in one day. Yeah. So they choose one of these blanks over here. Yes. Uh, then we have toolkits and as you can see here with the vices and that, they just go through the process and at the end of the day they have a didgeridoo they can take with them. Right. So they... Um this is one good purpose for termites then. Most people yeah, would be yeah. packing death if they saw termites. These termites are different to are the ones that will eat your house out. Right. The actual name for these ones in the area where I go is called Cop the Termi French Eye. And right. what they do is, um, this is a great example, this one here. Yes. You can see that there is sapwood and heartwood. Yes. Well, what they'll eat out is only the heartwood. Right. They won't eat the sapwood when the tree's alive, when it's living. Yes. So they will pipe the tree out, but it's still got its integrity for a didgeridoo. Right. Um, and they pipe it in different varying stages. So this one, you know, they haven't gotten all the way out, obviously. Right. Um, and we come along and we try to find the... Chase yeah. them out first before you yeah. bring them home? Yeah. 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 Now, you mentioned boxwood. With the boxwood, is it called boxwood because it was the best timber for making boxes out of? I really don't know okay. <laughs> the answer That's to that the story one. I've been told, but you know, you never can tell. I know right. that the grey box yes. is 1.3 tonne to the cubic metre. Yes. Um, so it will sink in water when it's green at least. Yes. Uh, it's very, very dense timber and the timbre of the instrument is enhanced because of the density. The density, yep. Excellent. Well, thank you very much for that. Your name was? Alec Murchison. Alec, thanks for meeting. Digin a day. Digin a day. Yeah. Oh, I, like call it. It. I like yeah. it. I like it. I like it. Okay, Alex, I'm going to head over and see how we're going over at uh, Gift and Jigs. Thank you. Cool. Okay, well, you learn something every day, don't you? Termites do have a use. Oh, here he is. Look at these two guys over here. They've been in the makeup room, I think, getting ready for us. Okay, this is Cole Hosey, and Cole is a master box maker, and I'll see if I can just bring this back a little bit, Cole. Now, if you've got any boxes you can show me, buddy, yeah, I'm gonna push in between. Just join in as well if you want. What, what's this one, Cole? This is, uh, this is what we call our special trinket box. Yep, um, aim it towards the camera and then everyone can see it. It's a redevelopment of, uh, of uh, the original trinket box. Yes. Uh, so now what we've done with it is we've, we've actually put uh, a tray in it with a, a half sliding tray. So you sort of lift it out like that and uh, just sort of lifted the game a little bit. And the other thing that we've done, the other thing that we've done is, uh, is we've started adding what we call little butterflies to the, to the corners. Okay? Right. So the mitre joints. Like a spline? Well, a little bit or a, a bow tie? Like, a bit like a spline, yeah, a bow tie. It actually locks the... Um, the mitre together yes. sort of gives it a little bit more support. Um, and that's all done with the gift and jig? Yeah, we've uh, we've redeveloped the jig to um, to, to do that. Um, Excellent. Next year we'll be having the jig online so uh, people can actually buy the jig and all the accessories to do the bits of, uh, do the butterflies. So, uh, you know, like it's, 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 it's a work in progress at the moment. But, right. You know, like um, so far just developing the, the way how the box is. How do you get all this delicacy to get those little handles in there. The, 
the handle's just added on there. What I've tried to do is sort of match up the, the, the handle with some other component on the box. Yes. You know, like try and get some sort of unity or uniformity right through the boxes. And by, by adding little, little pieces like those keepsakes, you know, like that just adds to the box and makes it a little bit brighter and all that sort of stuff. The timbers in, 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 in the panels in these boxes are generally rare timbers. They're generally stuff that I'll uh, find in our travels around the other trim, timber and working wood shows. Um, so do you, do you actually go out to the bush sometimes and, and find a bit of wood and think, yeah, I think I might make a nice box out of this, or do you do the cheats way and just come around to the shows <laughs> and, and find a pretty piece on, on well, the floor I, I there? Used to, I, I used to go out in the bush and collect the timber. Yes. Uh, a friend and I used to, used to travel quite a lot and, and collect you know, various different timbers and things like that, but I don't do it anymore. Right. I actually don't have a lot of time to do that because we developed the jig, um, as you saw before. We, we've developed the, we, we actually manufacture the jig now. Yes. And that takes up quite a little, quite a lot of time, um, just getting that done. And, and, and the boxes are, are basically an offshoot of, of, yes. of what we do with the jig. So the demonstration. This is the means to the, the end. Exactly, from there to there. Um, and this takes up quite a lot of our time. So now the jig uses you. You really need to use this on a router table. Yes. You can't use use this upside down and use a freehand router over the top. Not really. No. Okay. It, just it, just it, asking the, the question. The problem. Well, the problem is that that to get it upside down, you've actually got to clamp the timber somehow like that in a vise yes. yep. to be able to work over the top of it. Yep. But. Um, that uh, that doesn't sort of work. So basically, it's designed any router table, any router, um, and and you can operate this quite. Um, if they wanted to get a hold of one of these jigs, where would they get them from? Tom? Um, if you Google us on uh, Edges Gipkins uh, Dovetail. G I F K I N S. That's correct. Okay. Because um, I used to spell it G I V. Now, why would I have done that? Gifkins, Just an idiot. I don't know. Well, I'm an idiot. <laughs> Yeah, some people, some people. That's how they pronounce it because yeah. it's easier to sort of yeah. say it. Yeah. But it's no, it's Gifkins. G I F K I N S. Uh, well, here's a way of remembering. Com. You make a nice gift with the Gifkins. There you go. How's that? That works. There like you go. That. You can keep that. <laughs> oh, thanks, mate. I'll, I'll, I will use that. But yeah, it's um, Gifkins.com.au. Um, Beautiful. And Google that, and we're the only one on the on the Google site, so yes. it'll pop up straight away, and then they can call us. Uh, it's all Australian made, so all the components are made are up around the north coast of uh, New South Wales. Yes. Um, we, um, we manufacture it at home, at our, at our house, so we're on the phone all the time. You can, you can call us up. Beautiful. Um, we do everything on, online as well, so if you, if you can't get to the shows or something like that, give us a call. All the modern us, work with box work. Do you get any somewhere? people come up to the, to the stand and say, it's not a real dovetail. It's not a real box joint because you've used a jig. Uh, no, actually, I get the reverse. I get, I get, I get a lot of people. Oh, I learnt this when I was at school. You know, yep. and I, I get that sort of thing, and I couldn't do it then. Maybe I can do it now with this. Exactly. Right. Well, so look, I've I been get, watching your problem. stand over the last couple of days, Cole. I've been quite impressed with the numbers. You know, down at mine, it's been quite quiet. But looking up here, there's always been a crowd. Not today. <laughs> no, well, it's Remembrance Day and people are doing something else yeah, at the moment, so I'm they happy are. for them to do that. They'll come along this afternoon. Yeah. Um, look, thank you very much, Cole. You're welcome, for the, the, uh For the five or ten minutes, yeah. I'm going to shoot off and see if I can annoy someone else. <laughs> there's plenty okay. of people that annoy you. Thank you. <laughs> okay, I'll see you later. Okay, see you later. Bye-bye. Okay, let's see what we've got next. Let's have a wander down this way. Um, heaps of hinges and uh, all these different brass screws. And we've got sandpaper over there. What else have we got? Oh, look at this timber, isn't this beautiful? <laughs> look down here, the, the slabs that these guys are sitting on. These are some amazing Australian hardwoods. Uh, a man with a camera. It is a man with a camera. Okay, we're gonna go over to Abranet now and have a chat with them. And then we might have a talk to some other people soon. So I'll get the tripod set up. I've already spoken with the gentleman from Abranet and he's using a Merca sander. I know a lot of people would like this. And the Abranet abrasive, so that's actually see-through. See that? You can actually see through it. 
It's similar to what uh, plasterers use. I'm going to turn the camera on this side to check that I've got a good image. And I think we're looking pretty good. Okay. He's actually, he's actually serving a customer. Do you think I should butt in? Or should I let him keep chatting to the customer? <laughs> I think he's, he's cutting the sandpaper. He's doing it in a hurry. Try <laughs> get over here. He's, I don't think you'll stop. Uh, while he's looking at that, let's have a look over here. And we'll have a look at this timber here while, while we wait for the Abernet man. And look at all this camphor. Look at all of that. Now here as well, this is a piece that I was looking at yesterday. This is four feet wide, four feet wide and probably seven feet tall. How amazing is that? And we've got all these hardwoods here, down the side. Himalayan cedar, red gum, look at the size of them. Bloodwood. Okay, I'll come, I'll come around the back. And let's see what we've got around the back here. More beautiful timbers. Look at all down there. That's pretty amazing. Okay. Swing around here. I'll do a quick circle. And this gentleman down here looks to be flat out. This is what a busy stall holder, stall holder does at the show. Okay, I'm gonna come, I'm gonna come down here. Oh, geez, it's gonna be a long way to get back up again. Okay, so how long have you been doing this kind of stuff? All my life. All your life? Yeah. Okay, so had your father or anyone been doing it prior to you? No, I started it off, basically. Yeah. Um, we used to be uh, post cutters and firewood cutters. Yep. And I just thought some of the timber was too good to go into firewood. Indeed. So I bought a mill and this is what happened. So when you say you bought a mill, do you have an actual uh, building that's the sawmill or do you have a mobile mill that you take around with you? No, we run three Lucas mills and a portable bandsaw mill. Right. And so you take them to site or do you fetch the timber and bring it back? No, we do it on site. Yep. Some of it we bring back, but most of it's done on site. So all being done with petrol driven machines? Yep. Yep, so you don't have a generator out there running electricity or anything? Okay. And what kind of areas? New South Wales or Queensland or um, somewhere? I've been right around Australia three times, picking up timber as I go. Yep. But mainly New South Wales. Right. Okay, and what was your name again? Barry. 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 Lee. Barry. I'm not going to have a hard time remembering Barry because my dog's name also is Barry. That's, ah. that's made your day, hasn't it? Well, don't kick me. <laughs> I, I, I wouldn't kick Barry either. Not to worry about that. All right, Barry, well, thank you very much for spending a couple of minutes with us. We'll keep moving around the rest of the show. Thank you. I'll tip this up because Barry's flat out there. Okay. I'm going to head back over this way. Look, what we might do in the meantime, Peter, I might come over and see you now. Is that okay? Are you ready for me? I'm, I'm ready. I think we can do something with this uh, Okay. Voyager. Now this is, the, uh, this is the Voyager drill press. Now I've done a couple of posts about this machine. Now this machine is a variable speed, digitally controlled, it's basically a lathe motor up here, the DVR lathe motor turned into a drill press. That pretty much a... That's pretty much it. Pretty I've much it. DVR lathe for many years and as soon as I saw this yep. and saw who made it and the fact that it was labelled DVR, I thought, that's brilliant because I've been saying all along that that technology can be used for so many more things. Excellent. It's done a brilliant job with this. Now, talk me what you're going to do through with okay. this. What I'm going to do is um, not only, I mean, you expect a drill press to drill holes. Yes. Okay, this can do so much more. Uh, what I'm going to do is actually tap a thread. I'm not going to tap it in metal or wood. I'm going to tap it in acrylic, and people know how difficult acrylic is to work. Yep. Uh, it chips as soon chip, as you look at it. It chips and it does all sorts of weird, wonderful things. And very hard. I hear that wood turners have a hell of a time keeping their chisels sharp, turning this stuff. Exactly. Yep. Exactly. So what we're going to do is, I've just got a piece of acrylic set up in here. Yes. Um, I've uh, been through the process and I don't know whether you can see what's uh, Probably what's not, because here. the glare is going to be there. Okay, but just believe that's me, fine. we've gone through this before. Basically, <laughs> I've, I've asked this machine what speed I should be running at to drill a 7mm hole in a piece of acrylic. It's told me we've set it to 2,000 revs and that's what we're going to do. So right. the first thing we need to do is just drill a hole. Okay, so it's happening down here. So we will drill that hole down there. And it's not melting at all on the bit? No. 
very quiet. And you didn't have to open the top up at all, Peter, to change pulleys. Exactly. Now that was uh, that was running at 2,000 revs. 2,000 RPM. So we're not going to be able to tap a thread at no, 2,000 that's just revs. Insane. Okay. So first of all, let's change this bit over to put our um, whoops. Uh, Always the in. way it's going to happen. Isn't it? Yes. Always. Okay. When the camera's so running, I've just got a normal old thread tap. Tap. Yep. Yes. Uh, we're going to sit that up in here. We'll put it in position. Lock it in place. Uh, now I don't have to reline it up because we've already drilled the hole in exactly that position. Exactly the same so hole. Everything's, everything's spot on. Yep. And what are we setting it to now? Okay. So now I'm going to go up to our menu up here. I'm going into advanced mode, and I want it to go into tapping mode. Yep. I'm going to enable that as a chip breaker mode. Right. Now we don't need to with this, but I just wanted to show you how it works. Do you want to just let people know what a chip breaker mode is? Chip breaker is, uh, particularly when you're doing steel, you need to run the tap in and then run it backwards just a little bit, just to break those chips and make sure it's clean. As I like you, this motion. As you go. I yeah, like that. That's it. I like, that's you're going good. down that's and you're going back up. Yep. That's perfect. Okay. So this is in chip breaker mode. Yes. I'm also telling it that we're going to tap this at 100 revs. Right. I've done now, it before. 100 RPM sounds 100 like a lot. RPM. Like that's one and a half rotations per second. That's right. Yeah. Believe it or not, I reckon it's going to do it. Yeah. I could, if I wanted to, bring this down as low as 50 revs. Right. But I've, I've got a feeling that 100 revs is going to work. Okay. So I'm going to tell it that that's okay. That's what I want to do. We go back up in here, and on my screen, it's now telling me that we're in tapping mode. Yes. Now, even though it says this machine is set for 2,000 revs, when I turn that on, oh, look it's at that. now only turning at 100 revs. Yep. Because it knows it's in tapping mode. Yes. All I'm going to do is bring this down. The tap will engage. Yes. And I really... Are you able to let it go? Look at that. Look at that. I'll have to let that go. Oh, let now it go that, to it. No, that's oh, a chip, chip breaker. breaker. Yes. That was a chip breaker. Reversing out. It was nearly a bad mistake, but it was. Do it knew more than we did. <laughs> that's how smart this drill exactly. is. Exactly. And now it's coming back out. Yep. And we have, uh, we have our our, our tap. tap. Did that go all the way, it or is it blind? Didn't go all the way through. That's blind at the moment. If I now wanted to set it all the way through, very easy for me to do. I can simply go back up to my advanced mode. Turn my tapping mode. Hey everybody, we're going to be off. doing a saw stop demo at the Trend Timbers booth in 15 minutes. I can now so bring my speed down to 100 action. revs. Yes, the same side, same rate. Yep. I can just do that manually. There you go, we're at 100 revs. I can bring this down. Turn, turn it, on it on manually, yes. It will engage in the same thread and simply pull through. And I don't itself. even have to do anything. It's going to pull all the oh, way through there. Oh, look at that. The MT dropped off. And yes, there's a safety feature, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> you're very, you're quicker than me. <laughs> this guy's got all the answers. <laughs> what happened was I'd sent it through too far. It hit the base here. Yes. And uh, so it did pull the, the disengager out. Yep. It wasn't tapping in hard enough. Um, the other thing it would have done if it was really stalled, it would have sensed it and it would have cut out anyway. Okay. Well, that's the feature that I did not realise it had. Yes. And I'll tell you what, I always try and make it a rule that I never try something live unless I've done it before. But, you know, no, I'm, I get I'm a bit adventurous. Yeah, you're adventurous too. <laughs> Me too. And so, well, look. I'm just going to unscrew that. Yep. Take that out of there. I'll sit that back I in don't there later. I to go back up in there. Uh, it's got to be there in the right go. It's got to line up in the centre. Yes. We'll take this out. Let's see if the thread actually works, Peter. Oh, okay. Here's the test. I'm going to put that in there. And there we go. That's pretty amazing. Now, yeah. why would I want a tapped thread in acrylic? One Apart from knows. a demonstration. Apart from a demonstration. Can you uh, think of anything on the, on the run? Yeah. A little handle. Yes. For argument's sake. Screw yep. something into a handle. Um, Good. Making jigs. Yes where you might want to, uh, to to use acrylic because of its hardness, it's the fact that it's not going to wear, etc. Right. Things can slide uh, against it. And, and it may need to be may need to be adjustable. Yes. One never knows when one wants to do something right. until you're faced with a problem. When you're faced with a problem, if you can think, I can get over that problem by doing this. Yep. It's maybe not designed for it, but I can get over it by doing Excellent. that. You've got to think outside the square. Always. 
Thank you very much, Peter. It's a pleasure. Thanks, I'm going to head over to Abernet and see if we can get them, and then we chum over to Sawstop. Thanks again, Peter. Okay, here's the man from Abernet, and he's got he's got his uh, Merca. I'm going to come around the back of the camera to make sure that I can see him all right there. Okay, I'm going to do a quick read. Um, okay, here we go. All right, I'm Dave. Hi, Peter. Peter. Oh, Peter, Peter from Merca. Um, you know that I like festival, don't you? No, I didn't know that. Well, no. you're probably the only person on the planet. But anyway. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> look, I'm fond of the Merca as well. This is a five millimeter orbit. That's a five orbit. Yep. yep. So the Deros comes in uh, in three three different versions. So right. you get a two point five mil, a five mil, or an eight mil. An eight mil orbit. So yeah. the eight mil is going to be slightly more aggressive and faster. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Ideal for like that sort of work. So removing all those source scars, trying to get that level. So you'd use a I'd use an eight mil. Uh, to calibrate that with uh, like an Abernet HD, the heavy duty. 40 grit. So 40 grit, so I do all my levelling and calibration with that yep. in an 8 mil. Then I'd switch to a 5 and go through the finer grit. So would you take 5 foot. down to around five, uh, 400 grit? Uh, yes. Yep. About 400, yep. then you go yep. to a 2.5? Yeah, you can do, but look, this this whole process here, I've done the whole thing with a 5, you can still do it, Yes. or with a 5 mil. The 5 mil is probably the most universal if yep. you like you can do everything it's the workhorse the yes. 2.5s and the and the eight mils tend to be specialists yeah yeah okay all righty so uh, do you want to show us in action is it what are we up to there uh well i've actually just burnished that one with uh 3000 3000 you were saying you're going to 4000 the other yes. day yep let's put a bit of 4000 on let's go let's go live on the edge a bit of 4000 yep and this, the 4,000 4, is from Abernet as well, is it? Yeah, it's, it's still a net product. It's called Abrolon. Right. Uh, so it is still the, the net technology. Yes. Uh, but it's foam back. So, right. So this is nice to work with liquids. So you can use this wet. So, so for sanding, yep. Yep. So for sanding um, you know, top coats, so like a polyurethane top coat or something like that, it yep. works really well with that. Uh, we get a lot of guys will use it with uh, like an organ oil. Yep. Um, on, on the lathe, uh, and the foam works really well because it holds the oil. Excellent. So you'll burnish Excellent. The Let's have a look. Same time. So. Now, when you're doing a burnishing, though, you disconnect the dust extraction? Uh, no. You no, leave it on there still? Leave it on, yep. 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 Okay, let me yep. have a look at this machine go. Pretty quiet. Very quiet. Brushless DC motor. So, yep. there. So that's it's not 10, so quiet now. That's at 10,000 <laughs> RPM, so that's, the, uh, that's yeah. your variable speed. So 4,000 and then right up to okay. 10. I normally run them around 7, 8,000. Just RPM. the middle again? Yeah. So it sounds yeah. like it's the middle of the middle. Five, the, yeah. the five and around 7 or 8,000. Yeah. I can, because the um, sounder communicates by Bluetooth, I can actually, um, with an app on my phone, I can actually uh, see what speed it's running at. Uh, and wow. I can also um, see the vibration I'm being exposed to as well. So it has a built-in vibration uh, measurement yep. device. Does it tell you how long before you're going to get carpal tunnel? Yes, it'll actually warn you. So That's you amazing. Can, um, I was actually using it yesterday, and I'd, I'd shown the app to a um, to a punter, and I'd forgotten that I had it switched on, and I got some 40 grit, turned it over, and started doing some really yep. heavy sanding, and I thought I was getting a phone call. Yep. And it was actually the app. The phone telling, warning you. It was the app telling me that it's, it's vibrating too much. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's pretty amazing. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they're a very high-tech tool, yeah. Give me another look, quick look at that, then we'll yeah. have to move on to uh, source off. And that's the nice thing with the product, is there's no dust generated at all. Yeah. No, nothing airborne, so you get up in a very nice, clean working environment. And also less stuff running around on there. Exactly. Yeah. And the finish you're getting on that for raw timber is... That's not pretty, bad for raw yeah. timber. It's pretty yeah, pretty special, yeah. Excellent. And what we find is the tighter the grain yes. and the harder the timber, the better the finish we can get. Indeed. It's, it would really, yeah. it's yeah. really pretty, yeah. yeah. All right. Fun Thank you very with. much. Thanks again for, for uh, joining in with us. And uh, we'll move on to Source Stop. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Well, Source Stop have just become busy for a second. Uh, let me see... Either, either, I don't know what the time is. How's our time going there, Troy? I'm ready to go. You're ready to go? Look, we've got a crowd here. <laughs> um, Troy, Troy is the, uh, I'll just see if I can get back here and see it all correctly. That's looking pretty good. I'm gonna have a quick read. Okay, all good. All right, now Troy is the uh, international sales manager for Source Up. Hey, Troy, how are you? Good, yeah, how are you, Dave? Actually, Troy and I have been hanging out for the last three days, so that was kind of a fake handshake. Yeah. And, but he's going in about another hour or two. He's going to be going over to Perth. So uh, we, I've asked him if he can do a demonstration. It's normally me doing the demonstration in Australia, but Troy's come over and he said, Dave, 
Step aside. Yeah. Step aside. Let the real guys do it. The master is here. The master is here. <laughs> okay, Troy, can you run us through what you're going to do here? Absolutely. And then we'll do an activation. Tell me why I need a saw stop. Well, you, biggest reason you need a saw stop, and, and, and Dave, you, you say this a lot with, with customers. This isn't, we, we have the safest table saw in the world. It's not meant to tell you you don't know how to use a saw. It's there to protect you if and when any of your safety measures ultimately fail. Yep. So it, push sticks get overused, featherboards get overused, guards, they're, they're plastic, there's a lot of yeah. impact. Those things can break down. Yep. At the end of it all, I've got a safety system that is going to stop, drop below the table, and shut the motor off within five milliseconds and leave you at, at worst with a scratch on your finger rather than a catastrophic accident. And kickback also is something that I haven't been mentioning to people. And I noticed that you do the demonstration in a rip mode. I normally do it in a cross cut. Sure. So uh, that was a very interesting for me to watch this in comparison to the demo that I normally do. So I don't know we've got uh, whether it's worthwhile actually doing a demo. Yeah, we'll Look, we may here. as well. We've got a lot got more a... people watching here. Yeah, we got a couple people ready turn to your, go. So... Turn your, your mic on. All right. And uh, see how you go. All right, everybody. We're going to go ahead and do this we'll stop demo over here at the Trend Timbers booth. Definitely come on around. And then we got uh, we got the live live show with Dave Stanton here as well. So yeah, right. <laughs> the other master. Yeah, oh, yeah. That's All right. right. So so appreciate you joining us over here at the Trend Timbers booth. My name is Troy Sanders. I'm the international sales manager for Sawstop out of the United States. So I I, I love coming to these shows because I, I get get a chance to talk about Sawstop right, and, and share okay, Sawstop with people that. Haven't haven't heard about this. Uh, I, I grew up I'm in the cabinet back industry. Here. I grew up uh, making cabinets, furniture, musical instruments, and uh, fourth fourth can generation. Can you guys carpenter. tell me if you can hear Troy all right? Someone just put up a little. Up that, as many of you probably know, little uh, you, you comment. Otherwise, friends, I'll get back over closer to it. That have had some kind of blade contact injury, and as a young man, they're always telling me you, you are not going to be able to move out of the way of that blade. It, that moves far faster than you can. Uh, so be very careful, and it was was lucky enough to be part of a lot of great safety. Uh, you know, how safety cool is this? We get to see everything at the show. How to use a table saw safely. Uh, and fast forward no, a number of years, now we have saw stuff. Uh, so you guys are going to look at a lot of great timber, a lot of great tools here. Uh, I'm going to tell you by by far and away, this is the most important tool decision that you're going to make today. Uh, if you're in the market for a table saw, or you've been thinking about it, this is the one that you need to, need to give a hard consideration at. So, uh, kind of give you an idea of, of why this is necessary, and th these are numbers from where, where I'm from, but every nine minutes, somebody has a, has, has a blade contact injury. Somebody touches a saw blade as it's moving. Ten times a day, somebody's losing a finger. So, it's a, it's a significant issue, and it's not as simple as... Uh, an amputation and I can I can reattach it I can put it back on those things can happen but the simple reality is when that finger is removed it's never the same it, it's just never the same as when it as you were born so uh, so the saw stop the way this works is I've got a small electrical charge in the blade and then I've got my brake cartridge that is uh, both generating that charge it's also monitoring to make sure it's consistent so because my body is naturally conductive, I can absorb electricity. It's a small five volt charge, completely imperceptible to me, but when I touch that blade, I absorb some of that electricity. What the brake cartridge sees is a sharp drop in that voltage and reacts. So it blows that brake within, uh, so it stops the blade, drops below the table, and shuts the motor off completely within five milliseconds. And like I said, small scratch on my finger that could have been significantly worse. So, but the, the great part about the saw stop machine is it's the safest table saw in the world, but it's also a high quality machine. Uh, building this in, uh, the safety feature into a saw, gave us the opportunity to re re look at re how, we, how we manufacture features that we wanted on a table saw that we felt like should be on a table saw for years. So when we look at uh, my job site model, my portable model, I've got a couple of a couple nice features. One turn elevation. I'm at full full height. I've got a, a pinch wheel back here I can do my bevels on. 
onboard storage. Uh, so all, all my bits fit uh, right here and underneath underneath the table storage so nothing walks off. So a lot of great features. The you guys are bringing all this slides in. As you get up into our cast iron models, everything's been built and designed for ease of use. Uh, so they're, they're easy to use machines, they're accurate, uh, and, and in large part because we had that safety feature and it gave us the opportunity to re-engineer those. So, uh, and then what you're going to be able to see as well, we're, we're going to do a demo here in a second. If you'd like to stick around, definitely I can show you how we reset the saw. It's, it's very, very easy. So $99 brake cartridge. I'm going to put a fresh blade in. It's going to take me five minutes to get this saw back up and running uh, to, its, to its normal uh, operating condition. So there's, uh, there's, you'll, and you'll see why here in a second. Uh, I've got a couple extra spares. You'll see the one that I pull out of the saw. There's no damage to the saw. There's no damage to anything other than the brake cartridge and, and potentially the blade. Sometimes you, I can reuse that blade, uh, but at the end of the day, no, it's, it's blade not cheating your trend, it's trend it stand. I'm finger. working here so, for trend today. So with that, we're going to go ahead and do a demo. I'm going to point out a couple things while I turn the saw on and get it get it going. Uh, I turn the saw on, it's doing a, a quick diagnostic check. It's checking to make sure I've got a blade. No, I'm going to move the camera slightly closer so you can see a little bit better. Is missing, the whole the saw actually won't turn off. So the whole, the whole computer, the whole uh, inner workings of it, built for your safety in mind. So if anything's missing that needs to be there, it's not gonna go. So right now I've got a green light telling me we're ready to go. I also have my blade at full height that is much higher than I will normally cut, uh, what is this, inch thick, inch thick material that's much higher than I would do. I do this for demonstration purpose. I also am gonna go, uh, my feed rate's gonna be a little bit faster. As uh, David alluded to on the live show, a, a moment ago, a lot of the accidents that we see are from a kickback, where all of a sudden my hand is in the, in the blade very quickly. Uh, I want what I try to do is replicate that a little bit. So you're going to see my feed rate a little bit faster and my blade height uh, a little bit higher than normal. But I got my green light telling me I am ready to go. Okay, guys, use, you're ready to watch this. We're going to use the hot dog here. Uh, if you'd like to record, now is probably a good time to grab your camera. Uh, come on, come on around close. So, all good. Here we go. So I'll, I'll take this around. You'll get, to, you'll get to see exactly where the where the saw blade Beautiful. contacted the. The Frankfurter. Now, what do you think uh, of that? On this, not a scratch. Now, everyone so here is, they all have gone to change their underwear. <laughs> at worst, just a little little red mark, a little scratch, maybe a Band-Aid. Uh, it's going to take me about five minutes to put new new components in the saw. I'm, and I'm going back to change the, the camera house. back, guys. So look at the ceiling for a second. would have been a trip to the hospital. There we go. A uh, couple weeks off work or a couple weeks out of your, out of your hobby. Uh, so certainly, that, if this is how you feed your family, that's this, pretty this amazing. needs even harder consideration. Uh, but but even for you, for those of you that this this is your hobby, uh, and you have other other means of feeding your family, this is still an important issue. So definitely come on in the Trend Timbers booth. Anybody, uh, myself, uh, anybody in a Maxis shirt, anybody in a Trend Timbers shirt, ask questions. Let us know what you think. Uh, definitely, definitely more than happy to have a chat with you. So, all right, thanks, guys. Let's do the changeover, Troy. Troy's going to switch the blade out now, so you'll see how quick and easy it is to do that. I'll come around the other side, Troy, so I can see what's going on. So Troy's just re-engaged the trunnion. There's no need to use two spanners, the reason being that the brake has firmly got a hold of the blade. The blade's actually buried into the, into the brake. 
sharpness is the only part that gets a little bit tricky sometimes because we've got three points of connection. We've got the arbor is holding onto the blade and we've got two pins holding onto the brake. So Troy's using one of the spanners which are purposely built to act as a kind of a pry bar. And sometimes this happens straight away, sometimes it takes a couple of minutes, but uh, I've never had one that we can't get out. But this will be the one, won't it? Watching. Yeah, because everyone's watching. We've only got 105 watching on the channel here. There we go. I think you've got to win now, Troy. Don't speak too early, Dave. Another little pry. There we go. There it is. So that's the break after it's engaged. So you can see here, this is what absorbs most of that force. That's, that, that's why the saw, is, there's no damage to the saw because it's all insulated by this crumple zone here. Uh, and also I'll point out this tooth, this stops, this stops fast enough that this tooth never touches the line. So it stops just that fast. Uh, with, with this, if this is a higher end blade, if this is a CMT or, or a Freud or, or a Forest blade or something like that, uh, I'm going to take this as, as one piece to my sharpener. Uh, they, can, they can look and see what teeth are affected. Usually I can get a new carbide put on, uh, get, it, get it redressed and get my high end blade back. This is about a $60 Australian blade. Uh, it's probably going to cost you about that to do, to do a sharpening. So I'm probably just going to put a fresh blade. I'll come around a bit closer so we can hear. The cartridges are not reusable, so those are those are one-time use, ninety-nine dollars. Uh, but the blade is potentially. And you still got these. I keep yeah, saying to people, you still got these. Yeah. If I was to reusable. offer you twenty grand and you cut your finger off and put it on the table there now, would you do it? It's a no-brainer. Like we're talking about two hundred bucks, I guess, for a blade and a cartridge at the worst. It might be one hundred and fifty. It might be just a ninety-nine dollar cartridge. I need to help you along there, Troy, sorry. No, no. <laughs> does it work with a dado set? It does work with a dado set. It's a different cartridge. So the cart a dado stack is normally eight inches. This is a 10 inch saw. So eight inches, you're one inch further towards the arbor. So you need to have a brake that can reach out one, min one inch more and it's slightly wider as well. They're a little bit more expensive, but they'll still work with the dado stack. If your saw can use the st dado stack, that is. Yep. And these ones can. Now, Troy's having to use the two spanners this time, the reason being the brake, this brake is not holding onto the bat plate. It's uh, he's got it hold here. Look at that, They're perfectly in line with saw stop as well, Troy. Do you see that? I, I do this a couple of times. You do times, that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I thought it was intentional. I never get it right. Do you get any false triggers with this? Uh... No, there's never a false trigger. It only triggers for a reason. Okay, so if it's made contact with... Even in coast down mode, if I was to touch this to try and slow it down when it's coasting down, it'll activate. So you just have to wait till you've got a solid green light at the back. Uh, it will act on conductivity if I've got aluminium that I'm cutting. So you need to set it to bypass in that situation. And it's a two-handed operation to put it into bypass. You can't just do it by mistake. And as soon as you turn the saw off after you've had it in bypass, it defaults immediately back to safe mode. So you can test if, whether or not it's going to activate the brake. All right, we all good there, Troy? I think so. Is it going to turn on? Let's double check. Yep. Can we move that off the table, please? Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Why? I don't want to wear it. <laughs> it's going beautifully. Okay. I'm going to leave Troy to finish off his uh, demo, and we'll go over here, and we'll have a look at Alan with his box work. What do you think of that, guys? Okay, now, Alan is... Alan Williams is absolutely amazing. He's sitting down here sharpening a chisel. I'll show you some of his gear first, some of the stuff he does. So he makes these beautiful bandsaw boxes. I'm going to tip this back a little bit so we can see what's happening. Now, I had a look at this one. Peter, can you come around and give me a hand, please, buddy? I want to have a look at the, the Baltic Pine uh, the, Nautilus the, box. The, um 
Have a look. Hue and Pond. Hue and Pond. That's the one. It's beautiful. The out of there. It's beautiful. So all cut on a bandsaw. Yes. Including, can you imagine doing that cut on look your bandsaw? Look at that. Show me the draw. Show me the draw. This is the draw with the inside, the outside yeah. of the draw. I go straight in. Straight in. So these are all made from a single solid piece of timber. Yes. Of so that is the bit of timber that's been cut out of that hole. Yeah. That's beautiful. So all the grain is going to keep on following the same way. It Everything is consistent is through the piece. Like this one down below it. And this one down below. This one's even more interesting because whilst we have the carcass and the drawers that come out of the carcass, yep. with this one... You'll Peter, I'm going to swing around so I've got light on the on the mic. I'm, it's a bit dark. Yep, there, there you go, go guys. You can yeah. see that a whole lot better now. So you can see here that instead of, as with that one, where you had the drawers within the carcass, yep. Here the draw fronts are hiding the carcass of the of the piece. Yep. And yet it is still all done out of the one solid piece of timber. That's amazing. Absolutely beautiful. I um Alan won't tell you himself, but I'll tell you he's the best in the world. I reckon he is. Yep. And he's uh, some of his uh, boxes have been given to pretty notable people. Yes, we could mention names like Bill Clinton and Prince Charles, uh, who were both not only have been given a box but uh, have been collectors of his work, so they've gone out and bought more themselves. That's amazing. That's amazing. Now, there's a couple here that are in the rough still that he's making. There's, there's a Nautilus. Another Nautilus that he's working on. That will, yeah. uh, that will end up being like that. That's amazing. And, and with a bit of luck, that might be finished in the next year or two. I don't know. If he keeps coming to these shows, maybe not. So here's the man himself. Alan, can you tell me a little bit about how you got into this? That's a difficult question. Difficult um, question? Mm, um, I first saw them many, many years ago on, in an American magazine, and I yes. thought, that's a good idea. So I went from there. Right. And you've been, you, you're a carpenter and joiner as an apprentice, were you? Yeah. Yep? Yep. Excellent. And uh, can I ask how old you are now, Alan? 76. 76 and still having a great time. And yeah. When do you reckon you'll give it up? Never? Uh, another 15 years. 15 years? Yep. And so when you're 91? You're doing the maths. I am doing the maths. Of course, you're 76. I'm helping you along. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and you're using this bandsaw here. This is a Laguna. Yes. And are you able to do a little cut for us? I am. I'm going to set the camera up for us, Alan. So I'm going to move it around a little bit, guys. Give me a second. There we go. That's all good. Now, yeah, I'm ready. Go for it. Just you're going to cut a bit of a shape out for me. Yep. No rush. Okay. So Alan is going to cut one of these out of that. Here we go. This is just amazing. Guys, if you, we aren't getting more people watching now, it's a shame because Alan is an amazing talent. And when you watch what he does here, this is just beautiful work. Bring it down. That's is that camphor laurel you're using there? Yep. Is this the back or the front you're going to cut off now, Alan? The back off, right? Cutting the back off. Now the drawers come out. Okay, so now he's going to cut the drawers out. I'm going to bring the camera in a bit closer. Around this side and tip it down on it. I should come around a bit more this way. Isn't this a talent? 
Look at this. This is one of the drawers. Now remember, what he's got there is going to end up like this. And this is the back of the drawer or the front of the drawer? Back of the drawer. Do you mark them at all, Alan, or do you just remember where they came from? I don't. I remember. Okay. He's a master craftsman with his stuff. Look at that. Right. I'll go back to Stan. You, you stand oh. here. And when Alan's done, I'm sure he'll give you a few tips if he wants it. All right. He's my agent. He's your... <laughs> <laughs> He's good, isn't he? Yeah. Okay, so you got to start putting thumbs up for this, guys. This is, you won't see this very often. You might see a couple of people that have mentioned, have a go at this, but Alan is fantastic. You know, Alan, uh, actually you know, he used to teach some very lucky people from time to time, so he does run workshops in how to do what he does. He still does workshops? Still does workshops. He does workshops at Artisans at, at Mundurk, at our place at Mundurk. Right. Um, his next workshop is actually next weekend. But only six people get to do the workshop at any one time. Right. So they're all hands-on. Is that available via our website? Um, you can check on the Artisans on the Hill website. And, uh, Artisans on the Hill website? Artisansonthehill.com.au Yes. And uh, there will be details of Alan's workshop. When we have dates, we put the dates up. But the best yes. way to get well into... All done. Show me how it all puts, fits together there. That's the back. That's another back. That's the drawer, another drawer, and then the fronts. Look at that. That is amazing. This, that's just brilliant. Fantastic. Alan, how many, how many could you punch of those out a day? I don't know. You don't know? It's not about the numbers, it's the satisfaction of doing it? Yep, I thought that might be the answer. Now, the gluing, the gluing process, obviously, you're, you're a little bit um, less in, in width. You've lost the thickness of the bandsaw blade in the drawers. So how do you keep them proud so that they fit in line with the front, or do you round them over so that they sit back over. a little bit? I also take a little bit off them. Yes. You look at this one. Oh, you they're can take they're... a little bit off the front? Yeah, definitely. Yes. Take a little bit off the outside yep. Yep. of the body, and then, then they're all rounded over. Beautiful. That's fantastic. All right. I'm going to I'm going to head over to over the other side here now. Thank you very much, Alan. Thank you so much for that. And uh, there's the man. If you see him in the street, go up to him and say that was fantastic. Thanks, Alan. Okay. Now we're going to be a bit shameless here. We're going over to the. Yellow Box and Stanton Bench Shed. And look up there, so we've got some signs. And here's John. <laughs> and we've got Julia in the back. And we've also got Derek over here. Derek's just lobbed in and said, look, I want to help. <laughs> I can't believe it. Oh, look, we we've, we've, yes. That, no, that dog's not real. It wouldn't be loud in here. But uh, today also is um, a, a year, is it a year since? A year since Milo was bitten by a brown snake. and. Uh, Four, four years since. Four years. Died. Right. Okay. Okay. All right. So what do we got here, John? We got anything new? Let's have a look at uh, John's table. Yep. So we've got all the normal dogs everybody's seen before, but the new yes. ones, this one here. Yep. Saw guide. Saw guide. So yes. It's designed to go into three dog holes. Yep. Lift into three dog holes, and it's got the rings around the base and work off the dog. Yes. Okay, so they won't be able to hear you there, John. So I'll, I'll transfer for you. So John's got a—he's—he's uh, he's left-handed, 
and he's got made a little jig there that goes into three of the dog holes and it's magnetic on the side so it holds on to the saw and it's perfect for square or 45. It's pretty cool. And that's on the site now? That, yeah, that's on John's site right now if you want to get one. Um, what else we got? John, anything else new? Fresh, there are some fresh there, the um, plant-based ones. Plant-based for, for the Craig clamps, bench clamps? Um, apart from that, not much new. You've been showing it all for me. Yeah, yeah, that's a, <laughs> that's a shame. Hold on. Okay, so Julia's got something else here. This is something else. So um, you can thank your wife for this. You can thank Vicky for this. Oh, can I? We've been going behind your back. Have you? What are you doing here? <laughs> you need to come, you, you come around. Hold on, let me put the camera back here a little bit. I'll come over this side. I can. So, so, so basically, I'm surprised what's going on here. You're, you're suspicious, aren't you? I am. Especially when you said we've gone behind your back. Yes. Um, we all got together because you've done so much for this community. Um, you've helped everybody out so much. Yes. That we had to give you an ongoing mascot. A mascot? An ongoing mascot. What is this? Ah, oh. <laughs> it's Barry. Look at that. <laughs> Look at that. You know what? It's going to, it's going to amaze him when he sees this and he's looking up. That's lovely. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you so much, John. No problem, Thank sorry. you, Julia. No mm. That's lovely. Look, I'm going to leave him sit up beside Milo. Is, it, yes. is Milo? Yep. So he can sit up beside there. So uh, oh, I'm really touched. Thank you for that. I'll pop him up over here. Well, maybe just there for the moment. He'll go on the, on the, on the sustainer. That's pretty amazing. Thank you. There he is. <laughs> of course, and the benches. And the benches, yes. Yep, we've got the benches here, and Derek is um, helping promote the benches. I brought three of these things down. No, sorry, I was going to bring three. I bought 11, and I've got five left over the back there. That's amazing. Maybe, maybe one less. Maybe one less. Yes. So these, these guys have been helping me out big time. Um, I'm going to swing the camera around the other direction. So we'll go to this cam. Okay, there we go. Thanks everyone for watching. There is no intro, there's no outro this week uh, because it's live. And pardon me, I'm still a little bit choked up from all of that. Um, what else can I say? We don't have the intro or the outro. We don't have anyone who's a patron putting their names up. But thank you again to all of my patrons for making this show possible. And look after yourself. And I shall see you next time. Bye.